Well, good morning. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to Grimsby Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for this joint service as we brought our two congregations to meet together as one body as we meet around the communion table. We thank Stephen Cuthbert, our preacher this morning, and he'll continue our series on the Christmas gifts. Last week we looked at hope, and this week we rejoice in God's gift of love. Before I start the worship part of the service, can I just bring four in-house notices? I'm sure you've seen them on the screen. But we've cancelled the praise and testimony service this evening on account of the present conditions. Please pray and support Fun Family Friday on Friday this week. Next Sunday we have a crib service at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Invite your friends to that. And we're running Christmas Post again this year. Please make sure you get your cards and donations for missions in the post box at the back. Ideally next Sunday, but the very latest, 11 o'clock on December the 19th. And now as an introduction to our worship, I'm going to ask the young ones to come and light the candle. Last Sunday, can you hear me? No. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath and thought about the Old Testament ancestors of Jesus. This first candle reminded us of our hope in Christ and we light it again this week. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of love. Love is like a candle shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the love we have in Christ. In their old age, God gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth a son called John. John spoke to the people bravely in the desert, denying his own comforts and prepared to die for what he believed, as he called the people to repentance. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And that's from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Let's pray. Lord God, your witness John the Baptist grew up strong in spirit and prepared people for the coming of the Lord. He loved your people and baptised them in the River Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us to have the same love that we would be witnesses to him and spread the good news of your love. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to worship together as we stand to sing. God so loved that he gave his son to lay down his life for our sake.
love the Father's given. He adopts us as his own. Only by the blood of Jesus could we come before the throne. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you came down from heaven to dwell on earth as a man, God incarnate, that you died in order that we might have life everlasting with you. So now let us raise our song of gladness and praise the Father, Spirit, Son. Amen. We're also going to be taking up the offering during this song. Christmas shirt on. Oh yeah, look at that. And yeah. I've got my Christmas outfit on. <laughs> you, well, you do look very cool. You are very red. We've got our yeah. tree up. Yeah, the tree's up. And you've got the decorations behind yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and Suzanne's in a nice Christmassy jumper. That's right, isn't it? We're all ready for Christmas. We're all, are you all ready for Christmas? Yeah. yeah. They did sound very positive, did they, Chief? No, Mr. Ian, no. Really is are we looking forward to Christmas? Yeah. That's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a little. Are you all ready for Christmas? Uh, um, well, I'm nearly ready, Mr. Have you got the tree up? Um, yeah, the tree's up, yeah. Lights? Yeah, lights are up. You didn't electrocute yourself or anything no, like that? No, 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 I'm going to electrocute myself, just Mrs. Roof. <laughs> oh, dear, why should we be worried? Now, I, I'm joking, Mr. Ian. Oh, yeah. good. So we're, we're very nearly ready for Christmas. Good, good, good. And uh, it's also Fun Family Friday on Friday. Oh, yeah, we got Christmas Woo! Fun Family Friday I'm on have Friday. A party here. We've got yeah. decorations up. We're going to have loads and loads of fun. And Jen is and Fliss are cooking a turkey dinner. Oh. That's what Jen is Wow. Trying. 100 people up to maybe. Well, that would be good. Yeah. That's like 100 turkeys. No. <laughs> I don't think quite that many. Oh, okay, Mr. Ian. So the last thing to do, Mr. Ian, yeah. is to, to, to finish off the Christmas list. Yeah, have, have you started your Christmas present yeah, list Yeah, it's down yet? here, Mr. Ian, uh, it's have, down have you, here. Have you all got your Christmas list? Have you given them to Santa yet? Yeah. Yeah? One second, Mr. Ian, I'm just finding <laughs> it. So you've started your list, have you? Yeah, I've started it, Mr. You've started Ian. it, okay. Yeah. I've just started a little bit of it, doll. Oh, I've not finished it yet. There it is. Yeah, there. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, my God. And you've only just started it. Yeah, it's a work in progress, whoa. Mr. Ian. Whoa, 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 work in progress. Yeah. But so, uh, look, I want all sorts on there. But no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't push that over. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa! I'll stand here. It's not very safe. No. You've got bananas, you've got chocolate. Water, yeah. Doggy, jumper socks. Well, I need socks. Shower gel, shower radio. Well, there are all the things that you have to get for Christmas. A new stuff. Chocolate again. Yeah. Bananas again. Yeah. Lego. Helicopter, like that from Family Friday, that, that VIP took away. Oh, yeah. Uh, a new phone. Yeah, I, I, I want the new Apple on. one. You want the new I Apple? I want the new Apple one. The yeah, new the, new, the newest uh, Apple. Have you seen it? The new Apple? Yeah. It's completely environmentally friendly. It's eco-friendly. It's eco and it's completely yeah. green as well. Yeah. And you want one of those? Yeah, I want one of those and I want a hippo. <laughs> a hippo? Yeah, I want a hippopotamus. What do you get the For hippo? For Christmas. What, what, why a hippo? Well, from the song, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Only hippopotamus will do. Join I don't if you need want. a monkey. I'm already one of those. Only hippopotamus will do. So yeah. You want, you, you want a hippopotamus? Yeah, hippopotamus and the latest <laughs> apple product. And the Ow. latest apple That's product. Hell. Well, you know, Chico. Christmas isn't all about having a long list of presents you want. Well, I know, but Mr. Ian, you love me, don't you? <laughs> so if you love me, you'll get me some of, at least all of those, because the list's not finished yet. Yeah. So Mrs. Roof will get me the rest of the list. You're, yeah. you're, you're really optimistic, aren't you? You're right, Chico, I do love you. Do we all love Chico? Yeah. All... Oh, wow, even more presents! No! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I, I love you, Chico, but just because I love you... Yeah? ...doesn't mean I'm going to get you all of these presents on this list. Oh, don't give me the big eyes. Oh. Chico, I love you, but because I love you... Yeah? ...it means I won't be getting you all these presents. How's that work? Well, it's... it's oh, by the way, I love you, so I'm not getting you anything. No! What it means is our parents love us. Yeah. But they don't give us everything that we want, do we? Do they? Well. Because okay, some of the things that we want yeah. aren't good for us. I mean, if you had all this chocolate and yeah. all this bananas, yeah. we'd end up with a sick Chico. When I get potassium overdose. Yeah. <laughs> and we wouldn't want you to be poorly, would we? No, Mr. Ian, no. So therefore, you're not getting a load of things off this So list. just the four bars of chocolate. No, no, no. 
So because we love you, we don't give you everything that you want. Oh, okay. But we, we give you what we, we think will be best for you. And in oh. a way, that's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? Yeah. God sent us his son, Jesus. Yeah. It's not what necessarily people wanted, but it's what everybody needs, isn't it? Everyone needs a friend. They need a rescuer. They need someone to save them from all their sins. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Whoa, Mr. Ian. So, so God loved us that much. Yeah. He gave us Jesus instead of chocolate. <laughs> awesome, Mr. Yeah. Ian. And that's much better than chocolate. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because Jesus lasts forever. Yeah, I know. Chocolate but, doesn't. It's like... Boom, boom, boom. Boom. It's gone. All right. So you take away yeah. that list. Don't okay, Mr. Ian. Thank you. Getting I can't grab it. it. Thank you. I've got it. All right. But it's about... Having Jesus in my life, isn't it? But there is some good news. Yeah? I've got you that latest Apple product. Whoa, awesome, Mr. Ian! I knew you loved me! <laughs> I said it was green. It's an apple. Oh. I've dropped it. The screen smashed! Oh! <laughs> Uh-oh! You've, you've crushed your apple already. Yeah, it's you've crashed. It half a second. Never thank mind. you, Mr. Ian. Shall we, shall we just pray? Yeah. Listen, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for Christmas. <coughs> Even though we might want lots and lots of different things, those things might not be good for us. But you know what's good for us, and you gave us Jesus at Christmas to be our friend, to be our saviour, so that we might be saved from all the bad things and the sins that we've been doing. So we just pray that this Christmas, Jesus will be the best gift that anyone can receive. And an apple as well, if that's true. And everybody said, Amen! Oh, Thank you, Chico. Oh, see you, Mr. Ian. We'll see you on Friday. Yeah, I'll see you on Friday, Mr. Ian. If o'clock. not before. Christmas dinner, if not before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, okay, okay, we'll see you later, Mr. Ian. Thank you, everybody. See you, see you later. Bye, bye then. <laughs> wow, bye-bye, everybody. we stand together as we prepare to gather around the communion table we're going to sing when i survey the wondrous cross
Please be seated. <clears throat> As we come to this communion table, let's prepare in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is a very special moment when we remember what it cost your Son to win our salvation. We think of the physical agony he went through. We think of the spiritual agony he went through, separated from yourself. But we know he did this gladly because of his love, because of your love for us. Therefore, Lord, we come to this table humbly, but with great rejoicing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It's my pleasure and privilege to extend to you the Lord's invitation to this, his table. We say it's an open table because it's open to any Christian, whether part of this church or not. But the invitation is to do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death on Calvary and his resurrection. We remember that through his sacrifice, the shedding of his precious blood that Jesus made it possible for us to be forgiven and our sins remembered no more. So can I first challenge you to come humbly before the Lord, confess and repent of your sin and then come confidently and boldly into the very presence of a sinly, sinless God and thank him for Jesus' perfect sacrifice. We should soon affirm that by singing such love, paying the debt I owe. And that's what we've come to celebrate. Secondly, we remind ourselves that Jesus could say, it is finished. So there is no way anything else could gain us access into the Lord's presence. Whilst we should always strive to live holy lives, to please the Lord, as this is his pattern, for our individual lives and for a society. But we should never think our good lives can earn, us, can earn us favor before the Lord. We have just sung, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast save in the death of Christ my Lord. No, here, we celebrate our God-given gift of his righteousness. This is a gift of grace. As we've sung, grace and love like mighty rivers poured incessant from above. This is the new covenant. God's grace meets our every need. So we haven't earned it, nor do we deserve it. But it is our only standing before a righteous God. And so our partaking of the elements in remembrance is an expression of our dependence upon that grace. We need to be singing a line from that hymn, teach me to live dependent <coughs> on your grace. Can I add that this meal is for those Christians who know and rejoice in Christ's work for them. But if you've not trusted Christ for the forgiveness of sin, You'll be wiser not to partake, but just share in the fellowship and enjoy the fellowship of this table. Our pattern is taken from the Jesus partaking of the Passover meal, which we now call the Last Supper. And Paul's exhortation to the Corinthians, where he quotes Jesus saying, For as often you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so to remember, I'm going to ask Neil to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for Christ, whose body was broken on the cross, as symbolised by this bread. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, dear Lord and Heavenly Father, uh, as we approach this table, we remember. Your words to us to that this bread represents 
your body which was broken for us and at this Christmas time um, we think of the words of that great hymn veiled in flesh the Godhead see hail the incarnate deity the incarnate deity God made flesh God in human form come down to die in our place on a cross your body broken in our place Lord, we give you thanks for it and we praise you for it. Amen. And we read that Jesus took the bread, given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So I invite you to open your little casket and partake of the bread which reminds us of Jesus' love for us. And we remind ourselves there is no richness of sin without the shedding of blood. So we'll let the wine remind us of Christ's precious blood as Martin gives thanks. Heavenly Father, we are thankful when we're reminded that Jesus laid down his life willingly. He said, no man taketh my life, I lay it down willingly. And Father, this morning, with grateful hearts, we remember the willingness of our Savior to give himself as a propitiation for our sins. And Father, this morning, with thankfulness, we just say, thank you, Lord, for being willing to die for me. Amen. 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 In the same way also, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the cup of the new covenant. So drink you all of it with gladness and thanksgiving. So we've met together as a body. This is a fellowship meal. And it's right that we remember at this time those of our fellowship who would call upon our prayers. First of all, some answered prayers. We thank God that uh, the kitchen is in remission so much better. Answered prayers. We thank you that, I'll get the name right, we thank you that Arash, the feast's husband, is due to land in Manchester tomorrow another cause of family thanksgiving. Then we remember those who are not so well. We think of Pam, Aunt Zena, there's Moore, Morris and Christine, Brian Della, and Odessa, as she anticipates and hopes there's no further delay to her operation. And we've been asked to pray for a former member of the church many years ago, uh, Alan. Um, he's now quite poorly in uh, end-of-life care, so we'll remember him and his wife at this difficult time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do acknowledge, as we've been reminded several times already this morning, that you are a God of love. We thank you, Lord, for the way in which you've shown that love to us in Christ. We thank you for the way in which you've shown that to us in the many ways in which our prayers, our requests, our needs before you have been met. 
So we thank you for the testimony of recovery, for the testimony of our being brought to this country. And we pray for Pam, Lorenzina, Les, Morris and Christine, Brian and Odessa and Alan. We pray, O oh Lord, that at this difficult time for them, they'll know of your love sustaining them. And we pray for Rachel, as she has to face difficult times, that you'll strengthen her and bless her. For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now as we sing our next song, the children are going to leave for their classes. One John four verse sixteen says these words, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. Let's stand together.
Now, before Stephen opens God's word to us, I'm going to ask Carol if she will read the passage to us. And our reading this morning is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Morning. Those are fantastic verses. Uh, it is my absolute privilege to be able to share about them uh, this morning. Uh, as you know, this is now the second week uh, of our Advent series, right? Hope last week, love this week, and then in the coming weeks, uh, joy uh, and peace. Uh, if you are new to church, or uh, maybe some of the young ones uh, sitting in, uh, if they are and you've been hearing this word, uh, Advent, and you're sort of thinking, well, what's all that about? Um, Advent is a word that simply means the, the arrival of something or someone, the coming of something uh, or someone. So within Christianity, obviously, it's all about the arrival uh, of Christ, which is such a, a focus of this time. Uh, of year, right? Culminating in 25th of December uh, when we actually celebrated on that uh, day. Uh, and one of the wonderful things about Advent is it, it gives us some special focus, uh, some special attention on these four themes uh, of uh, Advent. Not that it should only be this time of year that we think about hope, love, joy, and peace, uh, but you know as well as I do that sometimes it helps if you are you know, encouraged to think about something or forced to think about something. I don't like the word forced there, but you, uh, you know what uh, I mean. So, uh, looking at this key theme of Advent, uh, Advent today, uh, love, right? The, the advent of love, the coming, the arrival uh, of uh, love. Uh, and that is highlighted uh, in today's uh, passage uh, that was uh, just read uh, for us. Uh, there, uh, especially in verse 9, uh, in this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world. Now, this is not sort of the beginning of love here. Uh, this is not the first time that God has uh, shown uh, love, but, but by God sending his Son, uh, and the Son willingly. Uh, coming to earth and, and as we've heard the incarnation right adding humanity uh, to his uh, deity and doing that it is without doubt the most significant the most dynamic example and demonstration of love uh, that the world has ever seen or ever uh, will uh, see uh, as well so while it's my privilege to share about this it is our privilege as a church this morning to spend time together uh, thinking about uh, these things. Uh, maybe we could just, just pause for a moment, just pray uh, and uh, focus our hearts again. Father, we just take a moment uh, to thank you uh, for your word. Uh, thank you for time we can spend uh, in it uh, just now. Help us to be uh, open uh, to your Holy Spirit to teach us, to encourage us and to uh, challenge us uh, through it this morning. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 
Okay, you have your Bible open, I'm sure, yes? Uh, if you don't, take a minute, uh, look at these things, read them for yourself uh, this morning. Uh, very much want us to look at these things together, right? So that it's, uh, uh, you know, something that we do uh, together. Look at how the passage begins and ends. It's not a big passage, right? Seven uh, verses 7 through 11. Uh, but a lot packed into it. Uh, you have your Bible open. What does it begin with, right? You don't need to shout out. I'll just ask a lot of sort of rhetorical questions, right? Um, uh, look at how it begins and look how it ends, right? Just so that we can uh, see what's happening uh, here. The beginning of verse 7 uh, and the end of verse 11. So verse 7 begins with, Beloved, let us love one another. How does verse 11 end? We also ought to love one one another. So the two exhortations to love one another sort of bookend this passage that we're looking at uh, this morning. So it's like um, I do this with my kids, right? And, and you probably do it as well. Uh, you tell them what to do, uh, and then you tell them why they should do it, and then you finish with telling them what to do again, just so that they don't uh, forget about it. So that's what John uh, is essentially doing here. Love one another. He then explains why and then comes, circles back around and says, so love uh, one uh, another, right? A definite emphasis on these verses uh, of us loving one another, so to better understand uh, what that, uh, or what he means by that, uh, we obviously need to pay close attention to the verses uh, in between. Because something incredible about the love of God is revealed uh, in these verses, and we're told to love like that. Okay, so we need to understand uh, what it is that we need uh, to love uh, like if we're going to put it into practice as we are exhorted here with each other, right? Love uh, one uh, another. So we'll go through these. We'll look at them together. We'll highlight uh, just two characteristics here, just two characteristics of God's love, uh, and then we will think about how does that apply uh, to us uh, this morning. Now, before we do that, just quickly notice a few things, right? Uh, starting with uh, the beginning of verse 7 there. How does John address uh, the people that he's writing to? He calls them beloved. Beloved. It has the love word in there, right? It's, uh, it's in the family of, of Greek words that uh, our main love word is uh, used here, agape. So, beloved, let us love one another. It is just showing the care he has uh, for these folks here, the affection, the attitude that he has as he deals with this subject uh, and challenges them uh, to love uh, one another. Also, uh, if you are somebody who likes to write in your Bible or highlight or underline, uh, uh, underline the word us there, right? Let us love one another. John is including himself in this, right? He's not sitting there going, can't believe I have to write to you lot again and say, are you not loving each other? Wise up, right? This is, let us love one another. John is including them in this. So beloved, dear ones, let's love each other. Okay, that's his heart. That's his attitude as he writes about these things. Uh, also quickly notice the truths in verses, or second half of verse 7 uh, and verse 8, right? For love is from God, or, or love is of God. Uh, God, right? Simply um, uh, meaning love, right? God is the source uh, of love, okay? Uh, specifically, the type of love that we're talking about this morning, uh, it is of uh, God. Uh, that means that we need to recognize, uh, pay attention to how he defines this love. Uh, and we will do that. So, love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God, and knows or understands uh, God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. So he's speaking to believers here, okay? Uh, he gives that away there when he says they have been born of God, right? That is, uh, that is believers. And this is a love that will only be seen in God's people. It will only be seen uh, in believers. You will not see the love that John is talking about here in the world. Okay, This is a believer. Uh, this is love uh, from uh, God. 
Okay, so uh, keeping those couple of things in mind, let's get to the uh, two points uh, that, are, that we'll pull out of verses 9 and 10. One from verse 9, uh, one from verse 10. Uh, two things about the love of God that we need to uh, take into our application of this passage. So look at verse 9. In this, okay, that focuses the attention. So look at this. In this, the love of God was made manifest uh, among us. John likes to use this manifest uh, word. He uses it quite often. It's the idea of making something visible, making something clear, uh, making something uh, seen. So the love of God was made visible. It was made clear. It was, it was seen okay, uh, in what he's about to talk about here, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. So the love of God is seen uh, in the Son uh, coming into uh, the world. Uh, there's all sorts of significance in, the, in these verses that we could spend the whole of Advent just talking about these uh, couple of verses. But significance here is of what it meant for the Father to send his only Son uh, into the world, right? It was the Father who personally sent his Son. Now, yes, of course, it was his plan, okay? Uh, but he knew, he knew what was going to happen. He knew the rejection. He knew the pain. He knew the suffering that ultimately his son uh, would go through. Uh, he knew it would culminate in the sin, uh, in our sin, okay, being placed on him, right? And, and what that means, we, we sing about this, and uh, it, it's been on my mind even thinking about this. We... we we sing about, oh, you know, what it meant for, like, the Holy One to take, to take sin. And I just have no idea. I just have no idea. Sin does not shock me the way that it shocks God. It, it, it does not, I, I do not have the same reaction to sin uh, that he does. So what it meant for him to see that, I have no idea. But it's incredible. And yet he did it. He knew there would be that moment. You know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Okay, and yet he sent uh, his son. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. So that we might live through him. We are told here very clearly that a major purpose, a significant purpose uh, of uh, the incarnation was the benefit of others. Okay, the benefit of others. He did what he did so that you and I could have eternal life. So, what is the characteristic uh, of love, uh, or of God's love that's being re revealed here? Well, it's simply this, that the love of God is unselfish. Okay, it is unselfish. We see here that this love acts for the benefit uh, of other people. Okay, he did what he did, so that we could have uh, eternal uh, life. So this type of love does not say, okay, I'll do that, but what's in it for me? This type of love says, what is in it for others? What's in it for you? And what's in it for you? Uh, not just what's in it uh, for me, okay? So unselfish, right? Keep that in mind. That's the, first, uh, that's the first one. Second characteristic is in verse 10, okay? In this, again, he begins verse 10 in the same way as verse 9. Again, just bringing focus. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation uh, for our uh, sins. Uh, the redemptive work or the redemptive nature uh, of the love of God uh, is on display here. Uh, and John focuses in uh, specifically on the fact that the son, God the son himself, was the propitiation uh, for our sins. Now we can you know, go back to the basics. God is holy. He demands uh, punishment for sin. He can have nothing to do uh, with sin. It's been this way all the way back uh, to Adam and Eve and throughout the Old Testament. Uh, the sins of God's people were dealt with uh, through the sacrificial system that God himself put in place and gave very specific uh, instructions uh, for 
Uh, we know, you know, because we can look back, we see that was a temporary solution. God had other uh, future uh, plans. He had plans to send a savior uh, that would die, as scripture says, once for all. So God the Son comes to earth, and according to the plan of God, he sacrificed himself, and in doing that, he made full and complete atonement for all of our sin. Right? And, and we're just sort of mentioning these things in passing, and they are huge subjects. Right? Propitiation, the atonement, uh, all, of these, uh, all of these things. The wrath of God that, that I so, so completely and fully deserve, and so do you. That wrath of God, Christ took it upon himself. That is huge. Right? It needed dealt with. Christ said, I'll deal with it. I'll take it. Okay? And it was poured out on Jesus Christ. And the Father accepted that sacrifice. How do we know he accepted it? Well, Scripture says the proof is he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay? If Jesus was still sitting in a tomb today, that would have been evidence that the Father says, sorry, not good enough. I need something better. But it's not that way. He raised Christ from the dead, uh, fully uh, accepting uh, that uh, sacrifice. And there is forgiveness of sins for anyone who trusts in Christ as their Savior. And that belief you are clothed, we are clothed in the righteousness uh, of Christ. And that restores us as individuals to a position of fellowship uh, and a position of acceptance, complete acceptance uh, before God. And we can get into justification and all of that. It's just so wonderful. So what's the characteristic that we see here then? Okay. Well, it's, it's that the love of God, as seen here, is self-sacrificial. Okay, self-sacrificial. God the Son laid down his life. He sacrificed himself for others, right? He laid down his life uh, for us. He went through what he went through for us. We've spent time this morning already uh, thinking about that as we uh, celebrated communion. And, and what does it do? I'm sure you're the same as me. You just sit there and it's thankfulness, right? It's thank you, Lord. I can't believe this. Thank you, Lord. Right? And it doesn't matter how many times we've done communion. You know, some of you have literally done it hundreds of times and your mind still goes back to thank you, Lord. Okay? It's incredible. Self-sacrificial uh, love. So, the love of God, as seen in the coming of Christ and his mission uh, on earth, is unselfish and it is self-sacrificial. Okay, that very quickly, two points uh, in those verses. So, how does this apply to us? Okay, how does this apply to us? Uh, remember, that's the question. Especially in a church meeting like this, the question is not, how does it apply to me? As a church, the question is, well, how does it apply to us, right? In my personal devotional times, I can ask the question, how does this apply to me? But now, this morning, it's how does it apply to us as a gathered uh, group of his body uh, this morning? So love one another, okay? Love one another. That's the key phrase, one another, okay? One another. It is the idea of it being reciprocal. It's mutual. Okay? So this is not simply an exhortation for you and I to love others. It's not love others. It's love one another. It's the mutual uh, idea here. It's going in both uh, directions. And what kind of love will this be? Well, the example we've seen in verses 9 and 10 is that this type of love, right, agape, will result in unselfish, even self-sacrificial action that will freely and willingly and truly seek the best for other people, for uh, each other. So this is a love which I'm sure you've heard many times is not about words, it's about action. Okay, it's about what I do. It's not about what I say. Okay, it's what I do. It's what I actually prove. Okay, what you can actually see, what can be made uh, clear. So what we do for each other, okay, how we manifest uh, that love and how it is seen for one another. Okay, John has made it clear in these verses that this, this love, this mutual love that we uh, should have for each other is grounded in the very nature of God. Okay, he says God is love. 
right? Not just that God is loving, okay? He is love, which means he is the source of love, uh, this kind of love that we're talking uh, about here. He is the originator uh, of this love uh, here. Uh, Ian mentioned last week uh, that when it comes to the topic of hope, uh, that uh, the world's idea of hope is very different from biblical hope, and you will find that true of each one of these themes we're looking at. Okay, you'll find it true of joy and peace. You'll find it true of love as well. Biblically, uh, love is very different uh, from how the world uh, would think of it. The Bible has a lot to say about love. Have you any idea how many verses in Scripture mention love? Do you think it's more than 100? More than 200? 300? 400? 500? Yeah, there's just over 500 verses in Scripture that mention love for the total of nearly 600 times. Okay, so there's a lot to say uh, about love. Uh, in Scripture, the Old Testament tells us that God is abounding in love. It tells us that his love is unfailing. It tells us his love is faithful. It tells us his love endures forever. The New Testament tells us that God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, that Christ died for us. It tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, the New Testament also has plenty to say about how we love, right? Not just uh, describing or, or revealing something of God's love, but also then how we should love uh, each other as well, right? We're told that God's love for us is not just an example of love, but should also be the motivation of why uh, we uh, love others. John says later in this very chapter, we love because he first loved us, right? Uh, first, or Colossians 3 verse 14 tells us to put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Paul says in Romans, let love be genuine. Uh, he says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4, let all that you do be done in love. Now, it's, those, those are all very powerful, very significant uh, verses, and sometimes maybe we read them and say, yes, that's what I want. Absolutely, that's where I want to be. I, I, I want to abound in love. I want love to control everything uh, that I do. I want my love to be uh, genuine. Uh, I want to love others with his love, but, but what does that look like? You know, what, what, what is love? Uh, I'm one of those that, you know, when love starts to get talked about, I j my mind just goes to hippies. You know, it's just some people start talking about love, you hippie, right? Uh, and that's my fault, right? But um, what is love? And we could quote however many songs about junk that love is or, or isn't as far as the world uh, is concerned, okay? But, but what is love? What's something practical uh, then? Because I like practical. I'm sure you do as well when it comes to application of Scripture, okay? What, what can help me understand this? And, you know, we sit here and go, if only, if only there were some verses in Scripture that were really practical, really describe what love is, and we could just turn to them now and Oh, wait, we can, right? Absolutely. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 7. And you're thinking, why are we going to those verses? This isn't a wedding, right? 1 Corinthians 13 is much more than just wedding days, right? It's for every single day of our lives. So what will it look like practically? What, what will it look like uh, in definition uh, as we as a church love one another with God's uh, love? Well, here's the start, right? Love is patient and kind. And I would encourage you, if you get a chance, or, or make time today, make a couple of minutes, make space, five minutes later today, open your Bible to 1 Corinthians 13 uh, and, and, and read through these verses, right? Four to seven, so four, five, six, seven. It's only four verses, these, these, these profound verses on love. And spend a few minutes and read one word at a time. Read one description and just have a think about it. Because we don't have the time to do it this morning. So do it later uh, today. Love is patient and kind. Right? I could just stop there and think about that the rest of the day. Is my love for, is our love for one another patient uh, and kind? What a difference it would make in so many churches today. 
if there was more patience and kindness to each other. Never mind the other big long list that we're about to read. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things. Love believes all things. Um, on my, in my office, on my whiteboard, amongst the profound statements that my children have put on some of their drawings about don't jump out of a car when it's moving. Oh, thank you. Um, I didn't know that. Uh, in the midst of all those very precious things is uh, uh, something that um, you've heard before, I'm sure, uh, but when I heard it, it really challenged me, so I wrote it on my whiteboard, uh, and it's simply the phrase, always believe the best. Now, I, I have the privilege of everybody that I work with is a Christian, right? I work with Christians. You, you might, everybody that you work with might not be a, a, a Christian. Um, and, and you think, oh, Stephen's so lucky. He works with, with, with Christians. They must have no problems whatsoever, <laughs> right? And oh. um, there's problems, right? Uh, there's, uh, we can have issues. Uh, and this phrase reminds me, always believe the best. We can so often assume and, and, and misjudge people. And I still do it. Just writing it on the whiteboard doesn't make it all go away. But, but it's a reminder. Uh, love believes all things. Okay? Uh, it will believe the best. It hopes all things. And it endures all things. How practical are those verses? What is love? Spend some time, if you get it today, and just think a little bit more uh, about those things. That's what love is. That's what it means to love each other. That's what it will practically look like. It will be unselfish, and it will be sacrificial, but it will be seen when we are patient with each other. It will be seen when we are kind to each other, uh, and we, when we don't boast, and we're not irritable, and we're not arrogant, and we are believing all things, and we are bearing all things, okay? It will be seen, and it will absolutely transform relationships. It absolutely will. That's what love does. But it's a challenge, isn't it? Because I'm not perfect, and you're not perfect, and it's hard to love imperfect people, right? That can be a, a big challenge. Thankfully, there's help available. Galatians 5.22 tells us that love is a fruit of the Spirit, okay, amongst many other things. But love, it's the same love being talked about here. It is a fruit of the Spirit. As you and I walk in the Spirit, as, as we allow Him to work in and through us, He will do this. He will help us with this. He will help you to love such an imperfect person as me, and vice versa, okay? That's what He uh, will do. Okay? Uh, and it's consistent with the truth that we've already looked at, that God is love. So if he is the source of love, his Holy Spirit is definitely going to be helping us with that. But saying that, even saying that, uh, and I'll close with this, recognize here personal responsibility. Okay? Personal responsibility to love uh, one another. Because sometimes, um, maybe it's just how, mine, how, how I think though, uh, we start talking about, you know, love and God's love uh, flowing through us to each other. And we think, oh, oh, I just stand back, you know, right? Use me to love other people, Lord. And, 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 and I'm not proactive uh, or anything uh, like that. Now, <clears throat> I hate grammar, right? I've always hated it. But when it comes to Bible study, I love it because it's so important. Uh, it's so uh, crucial. Uh, the grammar in this phrase, and you go prove this for yourself uh, as well. Uh, the grammar in this phrase highlights that there is personal responsibility. Let us love, right? The voice there is active. It's not passive. If it was passive, then I could say, look, we just sit back. We don't have to do anything. He just loves through us. We're just some crazy 
Chico puppet or something, you know, that, with all due respect to Chico. Um, right? It's, it's active uh, here. We have responsibility, okay, to be active in loving, loving each other, okay? There is responsibility uh, there. The, the challenge of these verses is while we look at the unselfish and the self sacrificial uh, love. Uh, of God is to apply that to ourselves then because right in the same context we are exhorted twice in four verses to love one uh, another so this advent and not just this advent but you know forever right this advent and uh, beyond uh, as our minds are, are, are drawn to the example of Christ as, as they so often are at this time of year uh, coming to earth dying for us May we also take our responsibility seriously to be examples of this same love one to another, right? Mutual love one to another. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows, understands uh, God. What, what, a, what, a, what a blessing that will continue to be to our church as we love uh, one another in the way that Christ has shown us. Crown him the Lord of love. Behold his hands and side, rich wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified. Shall we stand together and sing, Crown him with many crowns? <laughs>
There's tea and coffee afterwards, and after we pray, there's just a, a quick uh, video, so just uh, be aware of that. But let's just close in prayer for now. Father, we just thank you uh, for time uh, together uh, as your people. Uh, we thank you for the promises uh, in your word uh, that you work in this environment and in this place. So we uh, pray you continue to do that. Lord, bless uh, this day. Uh, may these thoughts of your love uh, and our responsibilities to love each other uh, be on our mind uh, this week uh, and moving forward. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, just uh, what it is uh, to be a child of yours, uh, to have experienced and to continue to experience your love. And we're just so grateful for it, uh, and we thank you for the Lord Jesus. Uh, and it's his name we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. What's the best news that you've ever heard? Well, maybe as we go through the ups and downs of this global pandemic, it might be the fact that somebody has found a cure for COVID-19. <laughs> what great joy that would bring. But can I tell you, here at GBC and Christians worldwide have even greater news than that. News that fills us with hope, and joy in our very souls, despite what's going on around us in the world. Have you seen those slogans, one life, just live it, maybe on some four by four off road or somewhere? Well, it's kind of true and it kind of isn't. Yes, we do have one life on this earth, but the Bible tells us that we also have an eternal existence. Maybe it's at this time of year, this season of Christmas, that might help us reflect on this. This season where we celebrate the birth of a baby in an unremarkable town in Israel some 2,000 years ago. Jesus was that baby. And he is the key person that helps us unlock and understand this great news. This Christmas time, you very much indeed might attend a carol service. Maybe even come to ours on the 19th of December. The details are on our website. Or you may indeed watch a service on the telly or listen to one on the radio. And I hope it might prompt you to think about what life is all about. And what is, does Christmas mean in all of this? And why indeed is it such good news? You may also have been visiting our services online over the last 19 to 20 months. Or indeed you may have just started to join us here at GBC on a Sunday. And from that you might have questions that you are curious to find the answer for. So on January the 6th, on a Thursday evening, just after the celebrations are finished and there is that lull, we will be running an evening called Christianity Explored. And if you enjoy it, you could stay on for a further six weeks. We'll start with a meal, have a, visit a video presentation, and that will help us think and give you the opportunity to have your questions answered. The food is free, uh, and you'll not be asked to do anything like pray or sing or anything embarrassing. Look, we've done this before, and it's very relaxing, and the atmosphere is just right to have your questions answered. How do you want to book on? Well, you can book on through our website. You have the details. You could ask myself or my wife, Jude, in church or somebody else you know, just to let us know and get you booked on. We want to know because we want to know how many that you're feeding, that we are feeding. So on January the 6th at 7 o'clock here at Grimsby Baptist Church. We don't want to make this complicated. We just want you to hear that good news and respond by living the one life in response to the hope, joy and peace that that good news brings.